This morning, I am in Houston, Texas, actually in conference room at the uh, South Texas uh, College of Law that uh, has been generously provided for uh, my use today. Uh, and I'm speaking with uh, Paula uh, Howe, who from November 1991 until the library was uh, eliminated, uh, she was the, uh, my corporate reorganization back in about 2010, she was the law librarian for Exxon, now known as Exxon Mobile. Uh, Mobile. Uh, subsequently, Paula worked as a research paralegal uh, in the litigation department of the uh, company on a special project with the to Toxic Tort Group until her actual retirement, which was in March 2013. Paula, as is our custom in these conversations, uh, can we begin with a little of personal history to sort of set the stage of what you as an individual are like? Can you tell us a little bit about your life, uh, perhaps not only today, but even when, uh, when you were young? Well, I was born in Philadelphia, and I then was raised uh, in Glen Cove on Long Island. Um, from the age of three. My mother died when I was two, and I was adopted by my aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. A very good thing. And I attended Friends Academy, which was a Quaker school from kindergarten through high school. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shaped a lot of my life. I, I was very lucky to do that. Imagine you had a very good academic uh, education in, in the I Quaker did. school. Yeah. I did. And I was an only child, so that requires a lot of uh, initiative in just uh, in life in general. But I always loved animals, and that has been a you know a central part of my life uh -huh. even from the beginning. Well, that sort of leads us nicely into what is often my next follow-up uh, to this uh, uh, the question I just asked, and that is. Uh, asking about any hobbies, special passions, animals maybe, uh, yeah. and you know things of that sort, things that occupy time today, especially now that you're uh, presumably you have more on your uh, available for such things. Well, animals um, were always a passion. When I was growing up, um, you know, I had a dog and a cat, but I, you know, loved horses. Mm. So, but. In my later life, um, I, I've done a lot of animal volunteer work. I, mm -hmm. for like 28 years, have been a volunteer with Citizens for Animal Protection here uh -huh. in Houston. And when I retired, they offered me a part-time job helping in the uh, pet supply store as needed, where people oh. pay for the adoption. So now I do that, again, as needed. So, and I work for other organizations, so that's my, I, uh, I love art, so I dabble a little bit, but not much very recently. So you are not spending all your time actually painting or doing, uh, creating art? Uh, no. Some though, I, I gather. I, I don't really do a lot of art now, but like mm -hmm. t uh, tonight actually I'm volunteering on an annual event called uh, Art on the Avenue. Oh. which benefits Avenue Community Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. I got involved in that when I was at ExxonMobil because they were pro bono counsel for them. So mm -hmm. the, the well, event that, is tonight. Will that Saturday. be here in the city? Yeah. Yes, it's right near downtown okay. in a place called Winter Street Studios. And it's tonight and Saturday night, so I help on one of the booths. Mm -hmm. For several years I was on the committee for it, you know, help planning it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. I guess I think of art and animals as my passions. Not mm -hmm. doing art, but collecting, um, being around it. You may recall uh, the name Al Coco. He was the director yes. over at the University of Houston when you were first working for ExxonMobil or thereabouts. And I had recently worked with him. His wife, Joyce, is a painter. Uh, oh. artist and uh, exhibits and, and sells some of her art, uh, you know, through that uh, medium and enjoys it very much. And she's still active. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it. that's wonderful. I've, I've always tested very highly for artistic talent on mm. 
aptitude tests, but I've never really taken, I've taken a lot of classes over the years, but never, you know, focused on it to see what really developed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, maybe we, uh, in starting to move towards your actual, uh, what you did for a living all those years, uh, as working as a law librarian, um, could I ask you about uh, how you, uh, your academic background, how was it uh, that you became a librarian in terms of your education, formal training? Well, I always loved books, um, but I went to Elmira College in mm -hmm. upstate New York. It's, it was a, a women's college. My mother had gone there, and I studied French and international studies. Mm -hmm. Um, my thought was I wanted to be, I wanted to work for the United Nations. My, I had an aunt who uh, worked with them from its beginning. And mm -hmm. I always thought I'd do that and live overseas. And that Sounds did. very glamorous. Yes, it does. <laughs> Especially when you're 22 or so. <laughs> exactly. So um, I actually attended the uh, UN semester program my senior year mm -hmm. of college. and. Um, I actually met a, um, a fellow student. We did a big project on apartheid, and um, kind of went from there and fell in love. And that's why I moved to uh, California right after college in the now, Bay Area. I noticed that you were the uh, documents uh, librarian, at, uh, international documents indeed, mm -hmm. at Stanford University uh, right after library school. And even before that, when I first moved to uh, California, I got a job in the Stanford Libraries. I was doing uh -huh. um, secretarial work, which I was not adept at, but mm -hmm. that's what women could do yeah. <laughs> in those days. <laughs> I remember uh, hearing a lot of stories, especially in more recent years, from some of our colleagues that uh, those of us guys coming into the field seemed to be more adept or luckier getting some of the nicer positions for a while. But oh, yeah. Fortunately, that finally changed. And then after I'd been there a year, um, I applied to a library school. I decided I was going to get married, and then I decided not to. So I thought, I'll go to library school. Mm -hmm. So I applied to Berkeley, and uh, I got in. Pretty good library school in those days, too. Yeah, I actually applied to Columbia as well. Thank you. Another rather I might, well I might move one. back <laughs> to the East Coast because my parents were still there, but yeah. um, I they asked me to retake the math part of the, whatever those tests you are, you have to take for graduate school. No, probably the GRE and, or Yeah, whatever. GRE, yeah. and I thought, I'm not doing that, so Berkeley, <laughs> Berkeley it was. And uh, so I was there, I guess, early 69 through uh, March of 1970. Mm -hmm. Wonderful experience. How are you using your uh, French uh, language uh, background uh, a little bit? Or no, 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 not Most that of the much. documents were in English? Or? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I, I still, my French was a little fresher than it is now, which mm -hmm. is not at all. And, um, and so uh, anyway, since I had worked there, I knew people, so they offered me the job of the International Document Librarian, which was in the Government Document Department. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was perfect. I studied at the UN, and so I was responsible for the UN documents and documents of the uh, non-governmental organizations and uh, any other international organizations. Mm -hmm. We had a separate foreign document librarian who dealt with the documents of various countries and things. Okay. Yeah, so. The, the, uh, in those days, the European Union was not sort of a country, quasi-country like it is today, but did you deal with uh, uh, documents of its predecessor organizations yes. in your department, or did the foreign librarian? No, um, that would be an, an international organization. Yeah. Yeah, so I did that for, I mean, it was, I, I felt like studying at Berkeley, where I also lived in the International House, mm -hmm. which was a, a whole other fabulous experience. You did? I yeah. know where that is. Yeah. I, I, when I was out uh, a couple of years ago talking with Bob Baring, at the law school, it's right across I saw from, International yes. House, and my wife worked, lived there when she was a graduate student at really? the University of California at San Francisco. Oh my 
my goodness. Uh, a few years back, my, yeah. my late wife, and she told Starry she loved living there. Oh, it was. I mean, um, we just, they'd ha you, at dinner you'd have these tables, people from all different mm -hmm. nationalities, and um, my best friend was getting her master's in Spanish, so, you know, we just yeah. met the most fabulous people. It was wonderful. Yeah, well, I heard a lot of stories over the years. I didn't know Carol at, the, at, you know, at that stage in our lives, but uh, she had a, a wonderful time. And, living in the international Oh, it, it was just perfect. I met so many people. Yeah. And um, the, the libraries on that campus were amazing. Mm. Because the projects we had in school, you had to go around to all these different libraries. So, And then I wound up at Stanford, which of course also has fabulous libraries. Yeah. So. A little too far away to live at the international house, though, and maybe that was a later phase in life anyhow. <laughs> right. Well, that was before. So... Yeah. Uh, Yes, it was a different a different time, but I was uh, in the San Francisco area from um, 67 through 72, mm -hmm. and uh, that was when they had all the anti-war. Oh, yes. On uh, the, the People's that Park was an in Berkeley. interesting time in this country. It was very, very mm -hmm. interesting. And then when I moved to Stanford, it, it kind of moved down there. I remember my boss saying, no. If someone comes in the library, do not try to defend the car catalog. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I was uh, at a library where we actually uh, uh, microfilm the card catalog as a, a backup of last resort should that exact thing happen. Yeah, well, they did, you know, like rip out. Um, rip cards out of the card yeah. catalog, not in our department, but in the general M Many of catalog. our younger colleagues will have no inkling of, you know, what they were, uh, uh, Oh, they, yeah. Yeah. They don't even know what a card catalog is. Well, that's true. <laughs> or how uh, labor-intensive it was to uh, actually uh, have a card catalog and oh, build incredible. it and maintain it. Uh, oh, I was glad I didn't have to ever file cards in it. I, be terrible at that. I had friends who did. Yeah. Well, now you said earlier that you once thought maybe you'd move back east where your folks were or your uh, adoptive uh, aunt and uncle, but um, uh, you didn't quite go all the way east, but from, you know, the California, you were back in Arizona, which is sort of east. Well, I must uh, have been moving bit. around the country. I, I, um, met my, well, who, the man who became my first husband, mm -hmm. um, playing tennis at Stanford. He had just uh -huh. gotten his MBA, and he'd also been an undergraduate there, and he moved back to Tucson yeah. to work in the family business, so that's how A bit I, of a different place than you'd probably ever lived before. Oh, yeah. And uh, so we got married, and I moved there in August. Uh -huh. It was like August into uh, what Tucson. Have I done? It was horrible. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> well, there's no humidity, they say, so no, it's not quite that bad. Even it was, if it is 115 out there. <laughs> it was incredible when we went through um, Phoenix. It was 118 degrees. Oh. Mm -hmm. It was. It was just unbelievable. And we had an air conditioned car. Oh yeah, well I had one of those my first year in Houston, Texas. Uh, it was a nice car with that didn't need air conditioning where I lived before. Oh, I know. Yeah. I don't know how you could get. Uh, I don't know how people lived here or in Tucson uh, without air conditioning. Yeah. Well, they don't now. I understand, or at least if they can avoid <laughs> without uh, having it, uh, they, they have it. <laughs> yeah, quite a thing. So you. Uh, we're in Tucson, and is that where you worked at the uh, Arizona uh, Sonora Desert Museum? Yes, I got a part-time job there as their librarian, and mm -hmm. I was, I, always, I tell people it was my favorite job because, not because of what I did so much, it's because of where I was. It's a fabulous museum out in the desert, mm -hmm. and um, well, they still today do this, but they try to have as many um, Natural enclosures, not just big fences, but maybe tall rock hill. Um, I don't even know how to describe them, but I tried to make it more open. Mm -hmm. And it was perfect, and I took the, uh, the first docent class that they had, and I 
Oh. They were just organizing that, and I learned to uh, really understand and appreciate the desert. And uh, I just did, you know, I cataloged books, um, mm -hmm. I guess answered any questions people had. And I had a, a woman who was just a docent there who was helping me in the mm -hmm. library. And uh, she's actually the one who um, got me a contact in the law firm that I went to work for. Ah. Yes, I noticed uh, you uh, left the uh, museum and uh, I needed moved to what some of our colleagues and other types of libraries probably think of as the dark side of library science, which is law librarianship. Yeah, tell, um, tell me a little bit about that. If you don't yeah, mind. it was it was interesting. I I needed I would have stayed. I did stay at the museum a while after that. Mm -hmm. I would work on weekends when I was working at the. Well, I was probably in preparation for what you're now doing in retirement. Probably the arts. <laughs> I I loved it, but yeah. so she um, gave my name to one of the young lawyers at the firm, and he was like, you know, they read a catalog like, well. We'll order one of those, a, a librarian. <laughs> it was a, a totally new concept. That's how they used to probably buy books. So we'll order yeah, one they of just, those and they give just, it no further thought. <laughs> yeah, they, they just, you know, really, it was a, a unique idea. So I went and interviewed mm -hmm. with them, and they were impressed, and they said, they hired me, and they said, well, you'll be doing the docketing as well. Of course, I had no idea what a docket <laughs> was. What a docket was, <laughs> So I said, oh, great. So... <laughs> It's called learning on the job. We yeah, all yeah. had to do it at one point or another. And now they tell you, never accept something where you don't even know what it is you're going to be doing. Maybe that's because everyone's gotten smarter about evaluating all these sorts of things now. But uh, in our days, it was, you know, take a chance. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, um, it was a, a totally new idea. They didn't, they were going to give it a try. So, uh -huh. and of course... They had the books, but that was about it. And then the docketing, you know, and the files, which I was then responsible for, that was a whole interesting experience where you did it all by hand. Mm -hmm. You had to calculate, you know, when the, how much time they had to file something, and you had a written, you know, a written thing at the, which you sent to the attorney. It was very mm -hmm. primitive. But I set up all the, you know, check in records and mm -hmm. organized. I don't, I don't even remember. I think it was just in one room at that time. And then, after I'd been there a few years, they moved to the uh, building across the street, a new building. So uh -huh. that required planning the new space and planning the move and stuff. And so I did that. Um, let's see. There was, well, I did go and visit some law firms in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. They had a couple of law librarians. I was the only law librarian. A uh, trip from Tucson, Tucson to from, Phoenix is not exactly across the street. Those places well, are it's pretty far apart. Miles, yeah. yeah. I would drive up there, yeah. and um, I remember I would tell my my husband's uh, family's friend. That there were several lawyers, and I said I was a law librarian. They said, and their eyes rolled. What's that? What's that? <laughs> <You> know, <yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> And uh, there, um, there was uh, there were law librarians at the University of Arizona, mm -hmm. but for networking, you know, we any other librarian was fair game. So we formed a little mm -hmm. group of librarians in the Tucson area and mm -hmm. would get together. And did you know uh, Ron Cherry? I think was yes, a, in, he was in there Arizona in those days. And and active. Uh, a woman named Carol Elliott. Work there yes, for years. I remember I, that name too. She and I were friends, so uh -huh. yeah, they were they were all very very helpful to me yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Iran had been a year ahead of me in library school at the University of Washington, and uh, uh, then he went to Harvard for a few years, maybe two three years, and then eventually uh, took the job in Arizona at the university. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a small world. Where it we is. encounter each other. <laughs> it is. And um, so you were uh, networking with your colleagues around the state. And yeah, local. and and locally, um, mm -hmm. and at least downtown, you can walk to to various places mm -hmm. where these people worked. And um, mm -hmm. 
I'm still friends with a woman named Allison Ewing who were, went to work at ASU in Tempe. Okay, I, I met her, her. Yeah. here, I guess it was in the 70s, in a dialogue class she came to, oh, dialogue. to Tucson for a dialogue yeah. class. Some I mean, of our catalog, <laughs> our, our library and colleagues today probably don't even know what dialogue is. I know. That and was a big, um, big thing in those days. For... And a, another thing, you know, the uh, in-house memo banks are big mm -hmm. in law firms. Even now, you know, kind of, I guess it would be like intellectual history sort of thing. Yeah. But um, there was a someone at Lewis and Roca in Phoenix who had developed this, what, what was then considered a <laughs> state-of-the-art system. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was like a... You have these key punch cards, and uh -huh. you have, um, you know, a, a code assigned to each subject, and you would punch out the holes corresponding to that. So, uh -huh. if you, if you, you wanted to hope search, you, got them you, you out would right. <laughs> take all the cards and put them on this machine, and the mm -hmm. ones with the no holes fell out, and that was your result. <laughs> Oh, that Looking was the back. bane of many a graduate student I know, working but out a, a dissertation uh, in those days. I mean, today's computers don't use such technology anymore, and probably for a very good reason, because you make a little mistake in the code, oh, and the thing, all of them get kicked out, and you have to start over. <laughs> anyway, so that we, we did have that. Well, I think we had about 28 or 29 attorneys, I guess. Uh -huh. At the time, it was a it pretty was good the, size firm the in the seventies. I mean, they were beginning to grow, really, even from there. But that right. was a, that was a good size firm, I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much my, my job. I had a lot of research and. Now, was there fo uh, practice focus uh, beyond Arizona sorts of things, or it, it seemed local? mostly Arizona? Yeah, a lot of firms in those days uh, right. tended to you know, stick to the basics of being around wherever they were. That, that's what it, it seemed to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were to have experience with the whole world uh, in a few, <laughs> few years, but exactly. you were in Arizona until about 1980, weren't you? Yes, I left at the end. I got divorced, and mm -hmm. I, I actually came to Houston to a small meeting sometime in the spring of 1980. Okay, you're yeah. working your way east just like I, you I say am, you thought you might do. I am, and I met um, mm -hmm. John Schultz, and he said, Oh, yes, from the University oh, of Houston. Yes. Yeah. And he said, Well, let's keep in touch because I might have a job for you. Oh, and that's music to the ears. I know, <laughs> and I thought, because, um, you know, there wasn't, I, I was hardly paid anything oh. in Tucson. There just was no development yeah. <laughs> opportunity. and. It was too small. My husband had grown up in Tucson and knew a lot of people, and I just couldn't get away. Yeah. So it was. Well, they uh, had a captive audience for the job market, and probably uh, a captive uh, level of uh, compensation too. <laughs> so um, that developed in the in the fall, and I was. Um, because I had my government government document mm -hmm. background, I was the government document librarian. I was I was not a professor. I was a reference librarian mm -hmm. as well. Um, now they used to appoint librarians. This is the University of Houston. Right. Yeah, they used to give them the title professor. Were, were you, did you well, they a, didn't give me that. They didn't so. give you. Maybe they were phasing it out because I understand right. they began to do that. Yeah. Well, it was the same job. I mean, exactly. You were still a librarian, and in fact, a law librarian, and the then new, still pretty much state of the art uh, facility that the University of Houston still uses. Yeah, actually. but it was after the big floods in 1980. Where, oh. You know, it was kind of um, excuse me, ominous because. You know, the, a lot of the libraries underground. Yes. Now, and I remember in the early 80s, they had two underground levels, and they were using the bottom one of the two. Uh, was that, Stupid idea. Was that where your office was, or were you no, fortunate was on you the were main, above the swimming pool, shall we say? I was on me? the main floor. Okay. That was yeah. still underground. Yeah. 
No, no. Well, yes, it was. You, yeah, you had it to was. Walk, you went down a And you walked stairway. down and you walked past sandbags when yeah. you went in, which was another ominous thing. We used to uh, worry about that when we were first in there. We noticed that with a good-sized thunderstorm, uh, water would come down cascading oh, down sure. the steps into sure. the library. And so we had bought all these books from the West, and they came in the large bo boxes that you know, whole order of the National Reporter was shipped in mm -hmm. a bunch of these boxes. And we had some old books and we refilled these boxes and we used those as sort of cover dams uh, when the storms would come <laughs> to kind of block that. So they, they moved on to sandbags later on. You know. Yes, sandbags. That would be a bit ominous to see. <laughs> so um, it was a totally different place then. Mm -hmm. Roberta Schaefer was there. Yes. She, oh, she's still a, a good friend of mine. Uh -huh. And. Uh, yeah. Did you ever know Virginia Davis? Was she there? She was a catalog librarian? Uh, no, I didn't. She's really. still there. She's been there like yeah. 45 years. I, I <laughs> may have met her. Our catalog was uh, Lolly Gasaway. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, who then became the director, uh, I guess, before you came. She had been director for a short time. Mm -hmm. uh, Al Coco was director when I was there. Right. Or law librarian, as we used to call them before we got fancier sounding titles. Yeah. Now they're all associate deans, you know. Right. Well, there's no living with associate deans. They're, they're way up in the clouds in the right place. But, uh, uh, yeah, and then Lolly followed him, and then John uh, uh, came along mm -hmm. after that. And he was there a very long time. Yes, he was. Yeah, and even through another flood that was considerably more extensive than uh, mm -hmm. oh, the one yeah. you just, just mentioned. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so I um, I was only there like a, a year and three months, mm -hmm. and I just, you know, I, I just decided it was not where I wanted to be forever, yeah. and... Um, so the physician at Exxon? Uh, no, this was Shell. Um, Shell, you went uh, to Shell Yeah, I, I, I was involved in Houston Area Law Librarians right mm -hmm. from the beginning, and became good friends with Carolee Cote, who was the and still is, the law librarian at Shell. So uh -huh. she uh, told me about, it was a totally new position, um, tax law librarian. But I, I kind of see myself as a, a pioneer. Not only was the mm -hmm. profession kind of a new thing, but I seem to wind up in these start from scratch situations where you're kind of yeah. Breaking new well, then, you, then you don't have to worry about someone's, uh, your predecessor's errors. In the exactly. <laughs> so, you may have some other worries, but those aren't included. <laughs> so here I was in the tax department, which are the tax attorneys are a whole other ball game. Uh -huh. So again, they had... You tell me about it. My father was one, my late father. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had their... Noses in the Lisley services, pretty much in those oh, days, yes. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they had. Um, well, just that must have harkened back a little bit to your uh, documents days, because I, I think of the sorts of stuff you were dealing with as a form of almost a form of document. Yeah, of you're right. Mm -hmm. So that was again a start from scratch. You know, mm -hmm. we they had moved from another floor, and the movers had put like all the periodicals in you know, backwards. I mean, it was a mess. <laughs> they so. sound like movers we had at the University of Houston a few yeah. years earlier. <laughs> Probably the same. I would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, I started from scratch, set up uh -huh. the check-in records, we reorganized the stuff, um, I fired the existing loosely filing service. Uh -huh. uh, Remember they used to have those things? Oh, I remember. Yeah. We hired one uh, because we couldn't get the kids, the students to oh, I know. stick to, I mean, you'd discover when someone would take over that stuff hadn't been filed for months in some of those services. Oh, yeah, usually it was put in a drawer somewhere, hopefully no one yeah, would ever or the, see it. Or down on underneath the table in that thing we call the round file. <laughs> exactly. So um, then after a few years, they, they were moving to... Uh, actually two different floors, the 42nd and 43rd mm -hmm. one Shell Plaza, yeah. and um, designing a new law library. And it was interesting, the, the head of the head lawyer had this idea, let's buy two of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that was. So It's only money. <laughs> I know, so we yeah. had two of everything, so it, uh, we designed a beautiful law library, mm -hmm. or tax library, and um, 
we got a catalog, hired an outside service um, to come in and catalog it. And uh, I mean, it was just beautiful. Yeah. Well, that building was built while I was here in Houston, so it dates it, but it was fantastic. I mean, 54 or so building. I mean, um, yeah, it, it, it's a, it was a nice your, your building. Your next employer got one a few years later, but a yeah. uh, nice one. But, uh, yeah, but this was. Um, it was a, a good experience. Again, I was pioneering. I learned yeah. all about tax research. I'll tell you, I was quite good at that. Uh -huh. And again, we had a, being in a large corporation, that at that time there were a lot of other, not a lot, but quite a few other uh, libraries and mm -hmm. librarians. So they had, you know, it was nice you had your built-in network. Uh, and of course, I was still involved in Houston Area Law Librarians. Yeah. I would think the local, uh, now it's a chapter of ALL, but it started off as a little more informal, I guess, back about that time. Well, it was in 1981 that it formally became a um, chapter. A chapter. Okay, so it was an early change. Well, yeah, and I think Roberta Schaefer was involved in that. It doesn't surprise me. She yeah. was quite a leader <laughs> in I know. a lot of ways, in a lot of the right ways. Her interview would take hours. <laughs> cover everything she's done. Yeah, I imagine so. <laughs> yeah, so um, that that was a, you know, a good experience, but mm -hmm. then um, they had their first um, voluntary severance package. Mm -hmm. you know, That's right, the energy market took a yeah, hit. Yeah, this was in 1991, time. and yeah. um, I was offered one, uh -huh. though uh, my boss said, we really don't want you to take it, but... <laughs> His boss said, offer it. Yeah, yeah. And, and everybody, and, uh, including... And the, you didn't have to take it, you know, yeah. but it was... But anyway, at that time, um, you know, Del Wary had been out sick all mm -hmm. year with ovarian cancer. And they were finally advertising her job. Mm -hmm. So... Now, she was the, at the time, the head of the library at Exxon. Right, uh, very Exxon highly Hall. regarded. I knew yeah. her through Hall. Had you met her at the University of Houston? Because she I started I, off there. I think I came after that. Yeah, I she think she, must have gone she, I think she started like in 72 or 73 That would be there. probably about right, because her predecessor was uh, Dwayne Gay was his right. name. And he was a wonderful person, uh, you know, good friend of mine who got to know I him. I remember you said yeah. that. And, uh, but he retired, and uh, he and Pete, his wife, had a mm -hmm. place in Cripple Creek, Colorado. Oh, they, well, a okay. vacation home, and I think they probably moved up there, although I don't know that for sure, if they were permanently up there or just seasonally. It's up yeah. in the mountains quite a ways, like 10,000 feet, so it may have been a seasonal home even after retirement. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I applied, and actually I was actively recruited. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, I went for an interview, and, and I, the first time I looked at it, I thought, oh, this is like going back to the 60s. Oh. It was a, a dingy room, um, you know, books piled to the ceiling. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it just, it needed work. I mean, and it was no offense to Dell at yeah, all. Well, Dell had been very ill. But, yeah. um... It probably was out an awful lot, unfortunately. Yeah. during that period. So, uh, but I was a little taken aback, like, do I really want to start at this level again? Start setting things up. So, uh, at first I wasn't interested, and then they approached me again, and I accepted. Car my, my friend Carolee Cote at Shell said, you, you'd be stupid not to take that. So, again, it was... Um, at that time, that uh, Humble actually became Exxon Company USA. That's right. Humble which, Oil was the name when in the right, early days here then, when um, it became Exxon. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, I didn't even know. We used to refer to the Humble Oil building in the days I was here as Yankee Stadium. Uh, the locals did because it was full of people from New York and places. Well, like that, that too. Yeah. Was also uh, and then there was the Petroleum Club, which was known as the L Linoleum Club because they had oh, yeah. linoleum. <laughs> <laughs> Help build it. Huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, I accepted the job uh -huh. and uh, 
you know, was very well received, and I, I found out later that Dell had recommended me. Mm -hmm. of, well, of the she candidates knew there. talent when she saw it. So that 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 was that was great. So there there it started, and again, there was a lot to do. Um, yeah, we well, had. You said the place looked like it was a throwback, about. Yeah. 20 to 30 years. Well, it really did. Of, it looked, yeah. looked very dingy. I'll bet you have very a few things you needed to do. <laughs> the codes, you know, obviously you don't put books to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So I just, and, oh, and also besides that, I was the records person for the law department. Oh, that sounds so like that, it was a challenge. Yeah, that was interesting. So I worked with a, well, first of all, we had a library committee. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a very formal I mean, the, the library and the librarian were very highly regarded at mm -hmm. that point. You know, I interviewed with like five attorneys when mm -hmm. I was hired. They had a library committee I worked with, and then there was a group of lawyers I worked with on the records. Yeah. You know, because they were always um, trying to update the uh, records management guidelines, mm -hmm. and law was integral in that. Certainly. So that was an interesting you know, interesting phenomena. Well, they um, all recognized, I'm sure, in those days that you brought a lot to the table that they needed at that table. Well, well, yeah, it was, we started out in the library committee, we did, you know, we had a huge study of the library and mm -hmm. hired um, outside consultants to come and advise us and um, uh, so gradually, and then they had like books all over the place. I, I'm mainly, the, this was actually the, the biggest law library. It was not worldwide at that point, but mm -hmm. Exxon Company USA had offices all over the United States. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, so were you sort of the central or chief library for uh, the whole company? or Pretty much, yeah. but we didn't, you know, again, Exxon Company USA um, was the, kind of one of the biggest parts of Exxon mm -hmm. at the time, but there were like uh, you know Exxon places overseas and, and all that, and there there was a huge library system mm -hmm. within Exxon, and they used they they used to meet every few years for a you know for a meeting, mm -hmm. which would include records people and libraries. So that was a that was a very nice feature, mm -hmm. and we had a, a directory of all the libraries and. You know, a printed one which told, you know, of course the staff and what the holdings were. There was a phenomenal amount of information. Mm -hmm. So I guess early on, besides the records, which was a sobering thing to go to the record center. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was not not an enviable place. Yeah. Not, it wasn't a real prestige thing to be in involved with records. Mm -hmm. And it was a real nightmare. You know, they had, you know, thousands if not millions of boxes always that they needed to mm -hmm. go through and get rid of. Did they ever eventually digitalize any of that? They must yes. have at some yeah. point. Yeah, a long, that was a long, long process. Yeah. Well, this was you said you went there in the early 90s, basically. Yeah. So that was a tad early for that kind of yeah. some use of the technology. Yeah. Well, in the library, they did. Um, they The company had um, gone with Sydney. Okay. And then Sydney Plus, and it had its own Exxon name at the time. So mm -hmm. it was not uh, in the law department well, well utilized. Oh. No. So... Um, what happened about the middle of the 90s, they decided that they needed a, they wanted to expand the library on the 17th floor and take in, uh, there were several little collections mm -hmm. um, hidden in different places and incorporate those. And so we designed this really nice facility mm -hmm. there and we upgraded um, Sydney to Sydney Plus over the years. and. You know, had a sort of online catalog. I would not say it ever was an easy system to use. Oh. Well, I, maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't want to down badmouth 
a product. Yeah. Well, it was it was difficult. part of its era. I mean, they were still being developed. Yeah, yeah, it was hands. it was developed. So yeah. uh, that was that took a lot of a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. Again, it was a beautiful facility, yeah. which was there till the demise. Mm. So, well, you know, you had a system that survived, and many of them, I mean, that we were looking at early on weren't around a couple of years later, and so uh, yeah. you, you had one that Sydney at least stayed, and, and they could enhance, and you could right. learn to use most efficiently. And yeah. Rather than have and we had we, we go back to the general counsel or whoever and say, "Gee, we did another three hundred thousand dollars to buy some new thing because our old one has gone out of business." Yeah, and they had um, barcoded everything, uh -huh. and uh, it was it was a pretty nice arrangement. Sounds like it was pretty much stay there. Little, too. We had a little computer room. Mm -hmm. We had um, Westlaw and Lexus come. And, uh, you know, they, I don't know if they still do that, where they have them come maybe once a week and are available for help and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I remember in law yeah. schools, they'd come once a year to speak to the uh, research and writing students and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, compete. And, oh, it was fun to play them against each other. I know, yeah. <laughs> Get some toy out of one and the other one had to match it. And it was yeah. fun. So, um, let's see. So we're getting like, well, well. of course I did a lot of research and then mm -hmm. in the 90s also I went around the country to the various uh, library, law libraries like Midland. So you finally figured a way out to get to the East, at least temporarily? Did yeah, I went to New Jersey, Jersey, to yeah. New Jersey. Uh -huh. So that was a lot of, you know, figuring out what they had, um, you know, anything we wanted in, mm -hmm. you know, in Houston, they would transfer it there. Some of them they closed down. Yeah. Some of them we just had liaisons with. Um, so that that was what was going on. And uh, then uh, the merger came along, mm -hmm. and uh, that was a whole other thing. Now we were we had we were the librarian or the library the main. Law library for the company, the whole world. So the company. The, the merger, post merger company became a principal law library. Right, mm -hmm. but there were you know collections overseas. There again, there we had a small collection in Fairfax that used to be the mobile. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. mobile offices, but um, so we, you know, we developed. Um, well, we did a home that we had the library committee, which we always work with consisted of you know, eight or ten attorneys. Mm -hmm. um, we did another extensive survey and targeted you know, the whole world. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you, then we uh, had all the resources. We knew what all the <laughs> Didn't start off with all that international stuff back at Stanford. That I was know, the foreign so, law department. But here you're doing it, the sort yeah, of. Yeah, so, and then we, um, we had another committee, the intranet committee. By then, Exxon Mobil had the beginnings at least of it, or they had a, an intranet. Mm -hmm. And the law, li law department wanted their own site of, of which the law library was a part. So mm -hmm. I was involved in, um, you know, in implementing that, planning it and implementing it and rolling it out. And mm -hmm. that, that was a big success. Yeah. Um, which those sorts of things revolutionized a lot of our work. Really? Yeah. Really. So, um, so things were rolling along, and they were actually even, we were thinking of adding like a, uh, a techie person. Uh -huh. And then, um, kind of fast forwarding, then there were rumblings, there were always rumblings that Exxon might build a new facility someplace. Uh -huh. And finally it became a reality that they were, they bought you know, several hundred, they had bought several hundred acres out. Um, kind of near the woodlands, kind of south. Or okay, north, to the woodlands. north of the city of Houston, a bit. To, right. That's a very nice area out towards the George Bush Airport, isn't it? Kind well, of? it's on a different highway. Oh, it's a different. Well, it's sort of a different highway. Yeah, it is out that way. Yeah, you have it is. So many. Yeah, you go. Yeah, you town. actually you go past Bush. Yeah. Way. So it's a little bit farther out. There. Right. It's huge. It's. Um, 
it's I've, I've read that it's the size of Rice University. Oh, wow. It's a huge place. So that anyway, that that was um, looming in in the uh, you know in the future. So mm -hmm. um, that that then they that's when I think it was in two thousand nine when uh, they decided to ha they had a new um, top lawyer in our building. He was, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, in the upstream. Anyway, he had been pretty much out of touch with... The one time he was the... Uh, short time he was the chair of the library committee, but mm -hmm. he'd mostly been out uh, in another area, which, in, in an international area, and they didn't really do... A lot of the countries we deal in, uh, you didn't... They didn't really have... Even written laws, sometimes mm -hmm. they were like in a drawer. And a lot of it wasn't online. Where, how could you do that? So he was not as much in touch. And apparently, um, you know, they we had, they started this committee, and um, I was told that they would downsize the law library, but there'd always be library services. Like mm. you, you will still be the librarian. There just won't be as as much of it. So. Yeah. And this was sort of the period of the uh, so-called Great Recession that it hit the country. So I imagine there was a lot of well, rethinking. It could have been, but I'm, I'm, I think the main motivation was we're going, we're building this whole new campus. And oh, there, there okay. won't be a law library there because no one needs a law library. Oh, yeah. No one needs these books anymore. Well... You know. Th that may be true, some of us, so much on some of, some line, of, but uh, heaven help them when they try and hunt for stuff in I this know, so. huge universe of information and without the aid of somebody who's a little more skilled in how to do it. <laughs> right, so... But they have to learn that from trying. Yeah, so that's how that developed. So we spent the yeah. whole, whole um, most of 2010 up until October yeah. Uh, trying to evaluate the whole collection and um, you know we did mm -hmm. some of the lawyer the different groups took the books into their sections mm -hmm. we uh, made an arrangement with um, I'm trying to remember the name of that group I can't remember the name of the group but they built a, a database mm -hmm. um, not as sophisticated as Westlaw, but it was more like to put the, uh, the national reporters and things and have them searchable. Uh, for some reason, my, it escapes mm -hmm. my name. But we gave them about 700 boxes of books of the uh, first series of the national reporters so they could index them. And okay. I tried to give um, books to other libraries. But unfortunately, oh, and then of course we let the lawyers finally take what they wanted. But um, you know, I found out in October. I was told, well, we finally know what's happening. The law library is completely going away, mm -hmm. and as of November first, you will be a uh, research paralegal in the litigation section. Well, so that's where you got involved in the I was uh, devastated, toxic uh, tort group. Yeah, uh, so we or, had them yeah. to, I guess it was August I found this out. So well, The library had been your life for a while, and libraries for even a while. Yeah, while, so, I um, understand. Yeah. you know, and it was, you know, so we had to kind of wind it up, and it was really sad because mm -hmm. they moved the dumpsters into the, in there, you know, and any books that weren't yeah. taken, they went, just went into the dumpster. It was well, just devastating. Yeah. Well, the reality had shifted. I mean, the cost of housing books, as you know, was considerable. And technology yeah. through digitalization had given an alternative that was expensive in its own right, but yeah, so cheaper that, in the long run than so that was, the books. So that was the end, and, and apparently they didn't, this lawyer, um, had kind of decided, you know, that there would be no library and no, there was no need for any library services. Mm -hmm. Nothing. A few and law firms have made the same judgment over yeah. the years. One did it while I was involved in the leadership of the National Association, and boy, mm -hmm. did I hear about that. And what were we going to do about it? Well, there really wasn't anything we could do. 
the firm did a few years later, they put together another library, but it took them a bit of time to come to the realization that they might have been a, uh, imprudent. <laughs> but who knows about you know, what's changing times and yeah. priorities. Yeah, so um, that was that was the end of that. Yeah. And they did have a small litigation library down on, a, I was on another floor then, so um, this was a big change yeah. for me. Now, did you remain in the downtown I remained facility, in the downtown. or did you go out to the uh, woodlands? Well, it hadn't, hadn't become a reality. Oh, it they were just still working on that. last year. Okay. That yeah, was... so, no. I, I was in the 800 Bell building mm -hmm. uh, my whole 22 years with the company. Yeah, no, that's the Exxon building. I guess they built just about exactly. just before very, you went there. Very yeah. well built. Extremely yeah. well built, but uh, but dated, mm -hmm. you know. And it, they did asbestos abatement even while I was there. Yeah, it's interesting how recently the realization has come that asbestos, which was considered a, a very useful and good product to use in construction because of the good characteristics, uh, how dangerous that really was, to, <laughs> because and of its not so good characteristics. And I avoided, I learned a lot about that in my job. Toxic my, torts, I'll bet there's yeah, a this, lot. Um, it is a, a, by far the biggest section of the litigation mm. the, yeah, group. You know, huge number of cases, a lot of them asbestos related. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the exposures happened many years ago and they show up later. Yes. So anyway, what, what this was described as they had this huge collection of documents. It was sometimes a lot of research material. Mm -hmm. Some were real people would take things out of cases and put them on the shelf. It was a it was a mess. Mm. And uh, my job was to make as much of it as possible go away. Mm -hmm. So I worked first of all with one of the toxic tort paralegals. Um, and you know, we went through what she had done. There was a giant access database that had all the information. Mm. And you know, she wanted to, she saw like recreating maybe a whole new database. So I'm thinking, so it was really overwhelming. You're just mm -hmm. dealing with all the stuff, and you had to make sure whether it was in the database, not in the database. Um, so then she retired. And then it kind of took a change, and they thought, well, sure, that some of this stuff might already be and should be in the, on a system called Introspect. Okay. So my focus kind of changed, you know, changed to creating this, you know, impossibly difficult new access database to mm -hmm. them. So that that was two and a half years of evaluating this and working with the attorneys because. Um, you didn't know, you can't just go through and throw stuff away without knowing how the lawyers might use it in the case. Yeah. And of course there was massive amounts of duplication. You know, at that, at, mm -hmm. even litigation was very paper oriented. And originally and they, when they said, well let's make mm -hmm. three copies of everything, so. Are they still that way as far as you know? I no, I think they've gone a lot more paperless, which oh, is mm -hmm. which is scary in a lot of ways. I remember the huge briefcases that uh, uh, attorneys who were litigating would would bring to court. Sometimes several of them would get dragged in by these big things with every possible piece of paper that they might possibly need in yeah. the trial. Well, that's what we were dealing with in this collection. Oh, because again, this stuff went back in time so far. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a lot about the history of both Mobile and Exxon, and a lot about all the medical directors and mm -hmm. all these companies that were no longer part of the company. It was a, it was a fascinating in that regard, mm -hmm. but um, kind of exhausting. I imagine. So, it, it, I worked, again, I, I work, asked the attorneys for input because I think that's the only way you can do mm -hmm. it and uh, weeded out a huge amount of stuff. Then I was worked 
down in the basement sometimes. Which mm. We had, of course, underground storage. Exxon, the Exxon building had two or three layers under under the ground. Yeah, that in many cities would be sort of expected, but here in Houston, I know. the high water table, that was the exactly. adventure something in its own way. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was uh, an interesting part. So I did, I did some research too, but this, it was a, it was more of a research plus just a, it was a library. Mm -hmm. It took, I think it, it was helpful to have someone. You couldn't just go in and throw it away and you, you just had to look at it all. So it was a very interesting project. Yeah. But then it was winding up and um, I just decided... What do you do next? And yeah, you made the, the decision that many of us made that it's time to do exactly. They're really, what you really call retirement. Yeah, and it was a good time financially to, to leave. So. Yeah. I left. Well, and <laughs> now I hope you haven't looked back and then no, uh, had I, sense of that. Or no, I haven't. Yeah. Um, I did have a, um, a job offer last year from mm -hmm. a, you know a, a lawyer who she was a former mobile attorney, pretty high up, who mm -hmm. had left. She came with the merger, but then she decided to leave, and she was with another oil company here and she wanted she had mentioned to me let's keep in touch I might have a job with you helping mm -hmm. us part-time with our library so after a year and a half I finally was contacted and you know looked into it um, but just from what was outlined it would sound like a huge a yeah. huge job. Part-time, part huh? Yeah, yes. <laughs> part-time, but I I just felt it wasn't really going to be yeah. part-time. Yeah. It would be part-time, but I'd be working a lot of extra. <laughs> You'd be working longer than the full-timers. Right, perhaps. yeah. I said, yeah. well, there's the library, and that could be kind of a challenge. Mm -hmm. they, they, they were still paper, they wanted to go, you know, digital, and yeah. then maybe a few uh, <laughs> Been there and done that, they hoped, huh? <laughs> And I, I just said I was very flattered, but I, you know, I thought I would pass. I was well, very flattered. It, it is nice to be highly thought of and, yeah. and have someone say, gee, we'd love to bring you out of retirement for at least a while. Yeah, she said, well, I'm so sorry you're not coming aboard. Mm -hmm. You know, we are going to have a hard time finding anyone with your talents. Yeah. So that was worth it all. I didn't have to take the job to feel good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I just, I just couldn't. I think that part of my life was over. Yeah. Well, another part of your life that isn't totally over now, because you were there yesterday when uh, at the hall meeting, uh, but uh, you, you were involved professionally, certainly in the local uh, Houston area law librarians uh, organization. You were president. I think you were secretary or yeah, treasurer. Like treasurer. Treasurer and. Maybe all the jobs for all I know, but uh, yeah, and um, you know I helped on actually two conventions. I helped on the, the first one they had sometime in the eighties, I think. Oh, the annual meeting was yeah, the here annual meeting eighty four something 83, like that. somewhere in there. They yeah. never came back after that. Yeah. Uh, and then I was actually in charge of the hospitality committee for the two thousand five double A double L convention. Yes. Was, and there was another uh, small hall yeah. meeting in Houston. I think it was around 1990. So yeah. the uh, one you helped in hospitality was in San Antonio. Wasn't it? San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah, that was a huge amount of work because they still did a lot of paper stuff then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've always done that. I've I've talked at various meetings about. Well, they've things. been back there at least once since. I think. Yes, they have. Yeah. I think just so. Houston hasn't been on the list. No, know. never since. It's a then. wonderful city. I mean. It is. You know, I think I mean, it gets a bad. Can't be any more uh, heat and humidity really than San Antonio, but yeah, yeah. it was very hot there. Yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know why. I think. Maybe they all like those rack. places along the river walk, and you don't have exactly that. Uh, well, they've actually tried to develop things like yeah. that in downtown Houston. They had a, a bunch of nice places when I was first here in the Buffalo Bayou area down there. Yeah, well, they've just put it downtown. They've completely uh, redone the Buffalo Bayou 
area between downtown and well, Shepherd, you want know, to Okay. Or it's a big, so a it's big a thing. It's just place. opening. Yeah. And they were trying to develop something like the River Walk in mm -hmm. the downtown area. I don't, I haven't walked the whole thing, but no, I just. Um, a night out in this place was, uh, and I can't remember what they call it, was how they recruited me to come to the University of Houston. Uh, John Nibel, who was dean at the time at the University of Law School, and Al Coco took me there one night. I was, you know, 26 years old. And mm -hmm. This was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of nice music and libations to go with it. <laughs> yeah, Houston was different then. It's been, I've been here 35 years. Yeah. So. Well, it's sort of that area fell into disuse even in the three years I was here. But, you know, there were alternatives in Houston. But, uh, mm -hmm. Or maybe if I moved on, I <laughs> probably did in some ways and moved away from being Joe College to, you know, whatever. <laughs> I've, I've liked Houston. I've always liked the people. Yeah. And it's I very friendly. Very friendly, and yeah. I think there's something for everyone here. Yeah. And people are from all over, so I think that helps uh, create it's, it's a, one of the most a diverse, welcoming environment. One of the most diverse uh, cities in the whole country. Yeah. Certainly vibrant now. I mean, I'm visiting here um, for you know doing these conversations and uh, getting a chance to see the city after many years not being here, and it's just a transformation I mean, in all the right senses of that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think there's a lot going on. I just, mm -hmm. you know, wish some of the politics in Texas is. Oh, not, well, that'll it's change at some point. I mean, so it's got to or we won't have any progress anywhere. It's I mean, so it's Gridlock in Washington and in many of the states now. It's just uh, Anyway, it's it's interesting, yeah, <laughs> to say it, the least. I imagine. Yeah. Well, your former employer is certainly involved in some of the politics in Texas and elsewhere. Oh, and yeah. For good business reasons. I, yeah. I um, may differ in my own opinions on some of those, but... Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very uh, fortunate to have been, I had worked for some very good companies. Mm -hmm. and working for Exxon was a, was a good experience. Mm. Do you want to talk a little bit about the uh, local organization and maybe any other work you, you did over the years? Uh, if you were involved in, uh, I know you said a few things about ALL service. Uh, was a I didn't of times. really do a lot. With double A double L, and I never was a speaker. I never really helped. I did right before I retired. They developed an animal law section. Ah, and now um, they had a version of that a long time ago too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was informal. Yeah, because they sir had some concerns raised when they had the meeting one time in Reno, and there was a mm -hmm. rodeo. Uh, oh yeah, that, would... that everyone. You're on one side or the other, and people do differ, but uh, that was a well, I'm not matter a of rodeo concern man. raised. <laughs> yeah, I don't. They don't treat the animals well. Yeah. But um, no, I guess mainly my folk. I, I, you know, used to go to small meetings. Uh -huh. um, I think I've talked at small meetings, but mainly it was, you know, the Houston. Yeah. You know, I guess because. Well, the Southwest chapter meetings. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good swath of territory. I mean, yeah, you were, you were involved in that when you were in uh, Tucson, as I remember. I yes, that. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know where uh, Swall ends and the Western Pacific chapter starts, or maybe there's some overlap. Arizona, I think. Somewhere out there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We used to. I got to go to a few of those meetings when I was here at the university, and I mean, we went to Lubbock one time, and I don't know other mm -hmm. places, and it was Denver once too. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I was, you know, young and had a great time. <laughs> Learned a lot, met a lot of good people uh, at those, and I imagine uh, you met a lot of good colleagues in the same Oh, yeah, way. and I, I still have some good friends from mm -hmm. those days. And I started going to the AAAL meetings. I think my first one was in 1974. Okay. I think it was in Los Angeles, maybe. Oh, at the Century City? I think so, but yeah, I mean, we little, went to the movie a lot for our opening reception. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a little vague, but I remember being a long ways back. Yeah, I was working at the law firm in Tucson, and mm -hmm. of course, for me, it was exciting just to be around other law librarians. 
Yeah, and yeah. quite a few. Uh, I mean, it was still considerably smaller the group that got together than it would yeah. be in more recent times. But it was it was growing and, and becoming more diverse. So. Oh, I think we forgot to mention how I got how I got in pointed in the direction of law libraries. Yes, I that is a question. I apologize for yeah, uh, um, passing over it because yeah, uh, you I, ended up with the law firm and. Um, well, I was. Um, but how how was it? When you I was were at, attracted to. Well, I, when I was at Stanford, again, when I think when I went back as a librarian, mm -hmm. Earl Borgeson was. Okay. Um, I think the associate director of, yes. of the library, and we became friends. And yeah, and Earl had been for many years the uh, law librarian at uh, uh, Harvard. Okay. Yeah, it was his background in our field, and he'd been the national president, the ALL president at one point, before he had left Harvard and moved to uh, um, Stanford as associate, as you say, university librarian. And. Um, yeah. So we became friends, and he started talking about law libraries. And uh, actually, I I did go and interview for uh, with a law firm in in San Francisco. Uh huh. Well, now that's not consistent with moving back east. <laughs> you no, know, no, that city this, they stay forever. <laughs> I know. So because uh, again, I guess I was thinking of moving on from you know Stanford. Mm -hmm. And this was a, a possibility, and I, um, anyway, but then it turned out I got married, mm -hmm. kind of, so you know. Arizona was it? Well, yeah, you know, we, I, we decided to not live apart, mm -hmm. so instead of becoming a law librarian in San Francisco, I moved to Tucson. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, right, I described that as a yeah, warm experience. Yeah, you so, showed up in August. <laughs> yeah, so we did that. And actually, um, sometime later, I did get an offer from the law firm in San Francisco. Uh -huh. Can't remember what it, what the name was. Uh -huh. Anyway, but I would continue to see Earl at the AA -L, L meetings. Now, did he serve in addition to being kind of a catalyst in your decide decisions to? move into our field? Did he serve in any way as a uh, mentor? Yes, he was kind of a mentor. We yeah. always kept in touch. That was a role he played for a lot of people over yeah. the years. And, uh, well, I kept in touch with him right there until, well, you know, right before he died. You know, yeah. used to get exchange Christmas cards. And yes. I remember one time, uh, he and I think his wife's name was Barbara, uh, sent mm -hmm. a card to me uh, electronically. It was very cutting edge in those yeah. days. And, and it was still in the days when you could open stuff like this safely, too, on a computer. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, he, so I'd say he was my main impetus for becoming a law librarian. Now, he eventually went from there, of course, to uh, Los Angeles County and then uh, to SMU. Did, yeah. Did you, you must have run into him maybe at oh, small yeah. meetings. And, yeah, uh, and sometimes we would sit together at the, yeah. the dinners and, and stuff. He was always very welcoming. Yeah. Always wanted to know how Lots I was room. doing. And, uh, he was my field work, uh, um, whatever they call a mentor or whatever. When I was in library school, I had to go for four weeks to field work. It was part of the standard curriculum. And I went to Harvard, and uh, uh, he was the director there at the time. Mm -hmm. I remember the last assignment he came to me and he said, uh, special assignment for it. It was about my last day or second to the last day. And then he described it and what it was to, was to go with his son and a friend uh, to Fenway Park for opening day. Oh, <laughs> oh how fun. <laughs> that was Earl. Yeah, isn't yeah. that neat? Yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of things. And he shot, gave me a project and I had finished it up So uh, by then so I could, I guess, go to the ball game. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was a very nice person. He was. He really, t again, told me at one point, and probably others, that he really had a great time at SMU and as a Texan. And, uh, yeah. Uh, he liked uh, that. He enjoyed that experience immensely. Yeah. Not that he you know, had any problems with the other ones, but he used mm -hmm. to just glow about his experience his years at SMU and all the people he met down here. Including you, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, that's great. 
Well, I think Paula, we're kind of nearing the end of today's conversation, but it's customary to ask if there's anything, anything else in this case that uh, we haven't talked about that uh, you would like to mention before we uh, wrap it up. I don't really think so. I guess um, we've covered the waterfront then. Huh? Yeah, I, I think I had. A, I could use that term in the yeah. city where you've had a couple <laughs> of heavy rainstorms in recent months. <laughs> I think I've had an interesting career, mm -hmm. a lot of diversity in it, you know, a lot of change, and yeah. you know. Um, Sounds like you thought it was a pretty nice way to earn a living. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was, and I've met some wonderful people along the way. I hear exactly the same thing from many of the people, probably pretty much everyone that I, I talk to on camera for these conversations for this history. Yeah, and, and uh, we all seem to like what we did. Yeah, and I met some. I remember, you know, like Susan Yancey, who I know you talked with mm -hmm. yesterday. That's right. I met her that when I came to that small meeting in Houston in 1980, uh -huh. and uh, we've become, we were very good friends. Yeah. Well, that, I think, is a characteristic that I know I've seen, is getting to know colleagues and, and not as competitors or anything right. like that. I mean, sure, we run each other, you know, run shops in some ways, but we're not, you know, we're not business competitors or anything. Right, right. There's really e nothing. Even the ones of you in the, in the real world. <laughs> right. You know, we, we network and we help each other. It's, it's yeah, Jane to, Holland is another, has yeah. been a friend of mine for years. Yeah, I talked with her yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And again, I do keep involved, uh, you know, I go to the occasional hall meeting and mm -hmm. they've always been very nice to me. They were, had a well, good the one I got to go to me. yesterday it was their monthly meeting. And it yeah. Was, it was well done. I mean, the committees all gave their reports. Some of them mm -hmm. sounded a little bit like they hadn't done anything in a month. Oh, I know. <laughs> Trying to cover their sins, yeah. <laughs> but what else is new? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good group. Yeah, it sounds again, like smaller, it. but again, moving in, I guess, a different direction. Yeah, well, I think having the city chapters in a city like Houston, where there are a lot of law libraries, uh, you know, is a nice alternative to the larger national and regional organizations. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was. Uh, again, after being in Tucson, we had our little small group, but mm -hmm. it was just so nice to have yeah. comrades, so to speak. It was, it was a, it's a, been a, at times a pretty big organization. No. So I'm, I'm happy with my career choice. Good. Well, that's, that's wonderful to, in retirement to look back and, and see that, I think. It's, it, it is. It's not everyone has that opportunity, uh, uh, from what I hear from a lot of people in no. other fields. And I'm also, another thing in retirement I'm very happy about is that I've had this passion for animals. Yes. Some people don't have passions. Well, you can uh, and, um, pursue that now quite often. And I, and I have been. In fact, I've, um, I've also, well, when I was at Exxon, you know, Exxon does a lot of pro bono work, and mm -hmm. they developed, a, wanted to develop a, a, a pro bono project involving animals, mm. and I kind of helped with that. And I started going to the uh, meetings of the Houston Bar Association Animal Law Section. Uh -huh. And I, I can't be a member because I'm not a lawyer, but they've kind of accepted me. You know, I'm just, I have some very good friends in that. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I've just thought that kind of combines some of my law plus. But I'm, I'm very glad because um, I just do so much. I'm very with various animal organizations, mm -hmm. and it, it just makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I won't do anything to help animals. Yeah. Well, certainly on that note, uh, I should thank you, uh, Paula Howe, for uh, talking with me this morning. And, um, I've enjoyed uh, it. For the uh, oral history, and I'm thinking you not on my behalf only, but uh, although I get to be the fun to have the conversation, mm -hmm. but also uh, Michelle Wu, Frank Hodak, and Dick Spinelli our colleagues with whom uh, I'm working to develop this, uh, this history for the Hein Online uh, mm -hmm. Spinelli's Law Library reference shelf. And again, thank you for uh, being part of it today. Thank you for asking me. Thank you. Good.